When the game gets going, there's no place like Assembly Hall. Once you come in here, you can feel something that you can't experience anywhere else. I mean, I couldn't imagine what it's like to be an opposing player there and feel like you have 18,000 people on top of you. It is really something surreal and something that no other school can provide. When you come into the arena, you'll see it in the color of the seats, the crimson and cream. You'll see it in the banners that fly north and south. Whenever you enter the assembly hall through either the north or south entry lobbies, you're surrounded by tradition. Two seconds, we're now all the way outside of Watford, three on the way. The university always had had a, an interest in having a, a large multi-purpose venue uh, for use with men's basketball uh, and other major university events. Basketball is probably taken more serious than anything else in this state and uh, that's just been a tradition the way things have been for years and it's like basketball racing and then like corn. And uh, those dreams really started back in the early 1950s with then President Herman B. Wells and uh, the University Athletic Administration, the Board of Trustees. Unfortunately, the costs were too great for the bonding authority that was available, so the building was held about a decade before it was rebid again in the fall of 1967. Construction actually began in December, and uh, four years later, construction was completed, and uh, the very first event in the building was Homecoming 1971 with Bob Hope and Petula Clark as the homecoming show. There were about 25,000 seats in the first plan as well. <laughs> I guarantee you, as the first ever marketing director, I would have died to have had 25,000 seats to try and sell because it would have been very easy. We used to think that we had a wait list that was basically double the capacity of this arena. They really didn't think there'd be a high demand for end seats or corner seats. The philosophy that uh, then became the governing principle was to have as many seats as possible on the parallel side of the court. I just remember being a six-year-old in here and being so overwhelmed. I thought that the steps were so steep. I thought it was the steepest place I'd ever been. And so consequently, a balcony came back into play. They tried to go as wide as they possibly could at the center court to get as many seats on the parallel sides. I mean, if you watch a game on TV, it doesn't really do it justice, but if you're actually in the facility and look up at the high seats, I mean, you cannot see the people that are up there. I think definitely how Assembly Hall is built is a home court advantage just because it feels like the fans are right there with the team. Energy is definitely a big role in a good basketball game just because it gets our uh, confidence up and it gets our fans involved, which is definitely a great feeling. You know, you see other people getting excited, but it's one of those few places where you can actually feel you know, the electricity in there, like everybody is getting excited at the same time. Everyone loves Indiana basketball and knows the history behind Indiana basketball. So it's not just they're energetic about the game, they know what's going on, they want IU to win. There's more behind the energy than just a typical, oh, that was good. The fans understand and they know the they want the team to do well. With Assembly Hall, there's so much history, you know, going into it. Just the amount of uh, energy in that arena whenever there is a game playing. I mean, I, I've never experienced anything like the energy that I've experienced in Assembly Hall. 